If a person is justified, it, okay, the process of justification happens at a cross. That's done. Then a person, Tim, comes to a place where the Holy Spirit's drawing and they recognize their need for Christ, okay, that they're a sinner, need a Savior, need a rescue, whatever. And then they place their faith. They believe not in your head, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. That he's raised from the dead. That's the process of salvation. I'm now saved. God did the work. I just chose to place my faith in him. Receive his grace to me. Okay. If that's where it stops, then it makes perfect sense. Like, just do what you want to do. Didn't matter. You're saved. But what Paul's addressing here is, is that, okay, so I keep sinning? No, there's this battle that rages. There's your flesh, all of its tendencies, all of its desires, all of its hurts, all of its woundedness. Like, if you get defensive easy, you know, if you're one of those kind of people that you're always a victim, it's always somebody else's fault, whatever, that's in your flesh. If you have some kind of craving for some kind of particular kind of sin that you're trying to trips you up, whether it's an addiction or just a, a habit or just a tendency, it's all in your flesh. Right? That's where everything's at. If you like pizza, that's in your flesh. Right? That's it. You know, you like a you like a certain paint color, you know, that's in your flesh. Right? So everything in the flesh isn't horrible and bad, just your flesh. But then there's the Spirit of God. The moment you receive Christ, the Spirit of God indwells you. How Titus talks about it is that we're being washed through the, re, the renewing and rebirth of the Holy Spirit. That's that wringing out the paint roller the illustration I talk about all the time, which I'm probably not going to get into today. Right? That the Holy Spirit is wringing out the unrighteousness, the paint unrighteousness of our lives. Right? The water represents the Holy Spirit. We get under the water, we wring more out. Get under the water, we wring more out. That the Holy Spirit is sandpapering off the rough edges is another illustration I use, because that's what the, the, the word terminology in the Bible uses. That he's sandpapering off the rough edges. He's working in us to be like Jesus. And our flesh is still our flesh, and it's doing the things our flesh does, but somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit's going to work on us in those areas. That we're still saved with all the stuff that we got saved with, with all the brokenness, with all the, I mean, because sometimes people say to me this, well, I can't get saved yet because I'm not good enough. Like, What? Or, I know I'm saved, but I don't want to get baptized, I'm not good enough. I want to overcome a few things before I... That's a lie from hell. That's what, that's what Paul's really saying at the end there when he said that who can rescue me is body of death. It doesn't say, hey, since you're so good, why don't you go ahead and do it through your self-will, through your abilities, through your talents. You go ahead and overcome all of the issues you struggle with because you don't need Jesus. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, bring all your stuff. Bring all your hurt, bring all of your tendencies, bring all your addictions, bring all your pain, bring it all. And I will save you. Not because of anything you bring to the table. I will save you because of the work I did through my son on the cross. You're justified. I am going to declare you innocent. You are acquitted of all of your sin. He does that so he can have fellowship with you. Have relationship with you. 